Okay, welcome to my second video in which I use an EEG machine. I explained it a little bit in the first video, so if you haven't seen that one, please watch that one first. Just so you know, I made this video about an hour after the first one, and I was already really tired from the work I had done that day. So this is going to behave a little bit different in this video. You see that the signal has come online now, and I'm putting my attention and intention on the object. I set up the cameras a little bit differently than I did in the first video. We see that there is that bump in the wavelengths and the object has begun to move. And we see that there's another big bump there. And the object keeps moving. So it seems that maybe just from learning about these wavelengths in the first video, I'm able to apply that information somehow as I do the second one. Making another big hill with especially the delta wavelength. And so, so we see some hills there with the wavelengths, but the, but the object has actually stopped moving here. And that's okay. I'm open to all data, so if it doesn't correlate, that's fine. It, that's good information to have, too. Here we see the object moving again. And we see some climbing there of the wavelengths. And the object reverses course. Some interesting drops there. I think some of that might reflect my level of tiredness too. Here we see more movement. Here we see an increase in the wavelengths. And now it's moving back in the opposite direction. Another climb in the wavelengths, and it seems to speed up its movement. And now those wavelengths seem to have come together, and then the object reversed course, and now they widened and climbed, and it's speeding up again. Okay, so I put this marker here that the next movement will be at the four minute point because here we're only at three minutes. So if you want to, you could just fast forward to the four minute point because between here and there, I'm trying, but I'm tired and nothing's happening. So I'm just going to be here looking at this for the next minute or so. It'll be interesting to know what happens with the wavelengths during this time. The interesting thing to note too is that I know I'm on video, I'm recording myself, and that always adds a little bit of stress during the telekinesis process. My telekinesis is always a lot better when I'm not putting myself in front of a camera. So I could be thinking about other things during this period, making myself ineffective. But I'm also very tired. So we're getting close to the four minute mark now. Okay, we see the object moving and we saw that little increase there, especially with Delta. But it wasn't a huge hill the way that it has been in the past. It was just a, a faster motion there. But the object is moving. There's some interesting changes here the waves, but subtle. The object keeps moving slowly but constantly. And then you see that correction there, similar to the last video where that was when I decided to end the experiment. So there we go, and then we'll go on to the third video. Thanks.